Hello, I'm Caitlin Tuza. I'm a pain psychologist at the University of Washington, and I'm going to be talking about connecting pain psychology concepts to pain neuroscience. To understand the rationale for pain psychology interventions in pain management, I think it can be helpful to start with what we know about pain neuroscience and the brain regions involved in processing pain signals, and then reviewing how pain psychology tools and concepts apply. Starting with the larger prefrontal cortex, we have a region involved in executive function, deliberate attention, cognitive appraisal, planning, and inhibition, all important elements in pain processing. Activity in the prefrontal cortex is associated with internal modulation of pain or perceived pain intensity, and the cortical projections to the periaqueductal gray largely originate from the prefrontal cortex. The medial prefrontal cortex is associated with the top-down regulation of sensory attention and affective processes. This area is associated with shifting attention between internal and external focus. Persistent pain is associated with changes in the function and structure of the medial prefrontal cortex, and this is reflected in cognitive function changes and changes in attention. Then the right lateral orbital frontal cortex is associated with reward and aversion processes, and importantly for pain, threat appraisal. It may be involved with pain modulation related to reward as well. The nucleus accumbens is associated with motivation, response to threat and stress, and addiction. The nucleus accumbens seems to play a role in analgesia and theoretically the motivation to avoid pain. It is connected to brain regions involved in sensory discrimination, affect, and cognitive appraisal processes. Of course, the somatosensory cortex, responsible for sensory discrimination, or what hurts and where, and how important is this information? There is evidence of cortical reorganization in the somatosensory cortex for some types of persistent pain. The anterior cingulate cortex is involved in error detection, salience, escape and avoidance behaviors, and difficult emotions wrapped up in those experiences. Increased activity in this area is associated with greater distress associated with pain. High pain-related distress is associated with reductions in gray matter volume and white matter connectivity in this area. But when patients address and reduce distress, we see increases in volume and connectivity here. Activity in the insular cortex is associated with both acute and persistent pain. The insular cortex is associated with the integration of experience and cohesive awareness of self. It's involved in integrating sensory, emotional, and cognitive processes and with learning and memory. The periaqueductal gray is associated with the descending modulation of pain and also response to threat. Relevant to pain modulation, it receives cortical projections largely from the anterior cingulate cortex and the prefrontal cortex. Of course, the thalamus, doing the hard work of connecting multiple brain regions and relaying messages to and from the body. It's not just a central station though, it's involved in pain processing itself and receives projections from multiple pain pathways. And lastly, the amygdala, which is associated with response to perceived threat. The amygdala plays a key role in emotional and effective responses and learning, such as fear and anxiety. Activity in the amygdala is associated with pain-related emotional responses also, and hyperactivity is associated with inhibition in the medial prefrontal cortex and cognitive function changes. If we zoom out, we can see that the overall processes described are related to sensory discriminative processes or attention, cognitive evaluative processes or interpretation, motivational effective processes or behavior, and overall learning. The many modalities in pain psychology use skill learning, behavior change, emotion processing, and desensitization strategies to address maladaptive learning processes and reduce distress associated with symptoms. Over time, changes in behavior, mood, and cognition are associated with changes in brain activity, volume, and connectivity in some of the areas described. I will go into more detail about pain psychology tools in part two.